so in this video we are going to answer this question the air bubble formed by explosion inside water perform oscillations with the time period capital t which depends this time period capital t depends on pressure which is p density which is rho and energy due to explosion which is given by e establish the relation between p which is the pressure rho which is the density energy which due to the explosion e and t which so happens to be the time so here we're talking about an air bubble which is formed by an explosion inside the water it performs oscillations with a period of time t now it means that this t we are talking about here depends on these parameters these three parameters so in other words it is capital t um depends on um pressure which is denoted by p density which is denoted by that rho and energy of the explosion and so our role is to find out the relationship between this and these three parameters more like to find an equation of this but we are supposed to be using dimensional analysis to do so since we are going to use dimensional analysis to do so here is how we proceed we shall proceed by finding the dimensions of t the dimensions of t are equal to to remove this const that proportionality sign we introduce a constant of proportionality let's call it k you can call it any other letter k times uh, the dimensions of pressure times the dimensions of density times the dimensions of the energy and of course this this p is to the let's call it to the power x density to the power y e is to the power z our role is to find the values of x y and z so let's proceed with our working so for starters let's get the dimensions of t are t so after getting our dimensions of t as capital t so what are the dimensions of p the dimensions of p are um this is pressure we know that pressure is force over area we know that force is given by mass times acceleration divide that by area and that is given by mass is capital m A area is lt to the power negative 2 divide that by area which is l squared and so as far as this goes the dimensions for pressure are this l cancels with one of those you remain with m l to the power negative one t to the power negative two these are the dimensions of pressure so let's go ahead and find the dimensions of density we know that density is given by mass over volume and we know that mass is capital m divide that by volume we are finding the dimensions of this the volume is l to the power three so the dimensions of density are m l to the power negative three those are the dimensions so let's go right ahead and find the dimensions of energy so the dimensions for energy energy the si unit for energy is joules where do joules come from let's um refresh our memory a bit if we look at work for example we know that work is going to give us force times distance we know that force is measured in um, force times distance and we know that when it comes to work the SI unit for work is joules so if the SI unit for work is joules we want to know how do these joules come about it comes from force times distance what is force force is mass times acceleration multiply that by the distance that is going to be times yeah the distance so what mass is capital m acceleration is l t to the power negative 2 times the distance which is l and so this becomes m l squared t negative 2 so these are the dimensions for work work is in joules now if work is in joules and these are dimensions 
that are equivalent to one joule. It also means that in this question, since our here they're talking about energy due to the explosion and energy is measured in joules, it means that one joule expressed in the di in, in dimensional form, it is this, because it's the same unit. So the dimensions of energy are also in joules, just like the way work is also in joules, and those are the dimensions. So we go back to our earlier step right here, and we are going to substitute all the di these dimensions here, the dimensions of T, dimensions of P, rho and e we're going to substitute them right there so this is going to become like this the dimensions of t are going to be a uh, time t is going to be equal to the uh, k is dimensionless what about p the dimensions of pressure we got them as this so it's going to become in the press place of that we're going to put m l to the power negative one t to the power negative two these are the dimensions of pressure which we got from here to the power x so we shall put the power x right there then we have the dimensions of density we got them as that so in the place of density this is going to be times m l to the power negative three we put this it is to the power y and then energy the dimensions of energy are right there so this becomes times m l two t negative two that is to the power z so this is going to become capital T, which is so happens to be time is going to be equal to. Now let's combine all the m's. So we shall put m alone to the power m here is to the power x, so we shall say x. Here m is to the power y, so we shall say it's plus y. M here is to the power z, so it we shall say plus z. Multiply that by l combine all the powers of L, same base, so we add the powers, L here is to the power negative x, negative x, L here is to the power negative 3y, minus 3y, L here is to the power 2z, so it's plus 2z. What about t? So t right here is to the power negative 2x, here there is no t, then right here, t is to the power negative 2, z. So after doing it like that, so we are going to com, com, um, equate powers. So equate powers of t on the left-hand side and on the right-hand side. So equating powers of t, t, the power of t here is 1, so we have 1 is going to be equal to the powers of t here. We have this, negative 2x minus 2z. That is equation one. Then we equate the powers of m. So the powers of m this side there is no m. So it means that it's going to be zero. It's going to be equal to the powers of m here are x plus y plus z. That's another equation two. Then we equate the powers of l. Here, this ends, there is no L, so it is 0 is equal to the powers of L. This way, a negative x minus 3y plus 2z. That's our third equation. So what is going to happen here is simple. We are going to solve these three equations so that we are able to find the values of x, y, and z. And after finding the values of x, y, and z, we shall go ahead and substitute them up here. And we will have gotten our relationship between t and the rest of these parameters. So let's get to it. So let's make x the subject of the formula in the first equation. After making x the subject of the formula in the first equation, we are going to substitute it in the second and the third. So this is going to become 1 is equal to negative 2 x minus 2 z. This is equation 1. We make x the subject of the formula. This is going to become equal to 2x when this 2x comes this way. It becomes 2x. We take the one the other side is equal to negative 1 minus 2z. Divide both sides by 2. This goes with that. We shall remain with our value of x as negative 1 minus 2z 
divide that by 2. So now that we've made x the subject of the formula in the first equation, we are going to substitute this value of x in the second equation and the third, so that we have these two equations having only two unknowns. So substituting, we are going to get equation 2, which so happens to be x plus y plus z is equal to 0. Then we are going to substitute for the value of x, we put in this one. So this is going to become negative 1 minus 2 z over 2 plus y plus z is equal to 0. To make this a flat equation, let's multiply through by 2. So this becomes times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 all through. So this 2 and that 2 go, we end up with negative 1 minus 2z plus 2y plus 2z is equal to 0 times 0 is 0. 0 times 2 is 0. So you realize that negative 2z plus 2z, this negative 2z and that plus 2z will cancel out. We shall remain here with 2y minus 1 equal to 0. And when we make y the subject of the formula, you will realize that y is a half. After getting a value of y as a half, let's now try and do the same. We are going to substitute this value of x in the third equation. We see where that gets us. So the third equation is negative x minus 3y plus 2z is equal to 0. So we substitute for the value of x here. So this becomes negative. In the place of x, we put this expression. So it becomes negative 1 minus 2z. Divide that by 2 minus 3y plus 2z is equal to 0. Um, to make this a flat equation, let's multiply through by 2. The denominator times 2 here, times 2 right there, times 2 right there, times 2 right there. So that 2 and that 2 cancel. This negative opens these brackets. Negative times negative is positive 1. Negative 1 times negative 2x is plus 2z. Minus 3 times 2 is minus 6y. 2 times 2 is 4, so it's plus 4z is equal to 0. But we already got y as a half. So if we substitute for y here as a half, it's going to become 1. First of all, this is 2z and that is 4z. 4 plus 2 is 6z, so it's plus 6z. Minus 6 times y, minus 6 times y, which is a half, is equal to 0. So we'll go ahead and isolate z. So this becomes 6z is equal to, by 2 ones, by 2, 3. So this is 1 minus 3. You end up with negative 2, negative 2. Goes this side, it becomes positive 2. Divide both sides by 6. You end up with your value of z as 1 over 3. So after getting our value of z as 1 over 3, I guess now it's easy for us to get our value of x. So we shall get our value of x as negative 1 minus 2 times z, which is a third. Divide that by 2. This gives us, this becomes negative 5 over 3 divide by 2 which gives us negative 5 over 3 times a half the answer here is negative 5 over 6 and this is our value of x so we have gotten our value of y as a half we have gotten our value of z as 1 over 3 we have gotten our value of x as this so our final answer we shall go on to say that Remember, we were looking for t is equal to k p to the power x 
density to the power y and e to the power z. And from our findings, we found out that the time period t is equal to the constant k times p to the power x, our value of x is negative 5 over 6 times the density, happens to be y, which is to the power a half, times the energy E, which so happens to be to the power a third. And that is our answer right there. This brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching. For those who would like to watch the entire topic of dimensions, I have a full video on dimensions on this channel. If you want to watch the entire video where I get to explain all these concepts of dimensions from the very beginning from scratch and I build them up from simple to complex, please check that video out in the description below. Like this video. If you like it, be sure to subscribe if you've not yet subscribed. Check out other physics videos on this channel. My name is Anul Dranga Kuramia and I'll see you next time.